Hey and welcome, I'm Solo and this is Zen Gaming. In this video I'll be going over how to play music on Twitch and set up audio tracks in OBS so you never send your music to YouTube by mistake. Before I waste any more time, let's jump into it. Okay, first it's a good time now to pause the video, use the bathroom, get a cup of coffee or preferred beverage or drink. This is going to be a bit more advanced than my normal videos. That being said, let's start setting up our audio in OBS. So when you open up OBS, most people are going to have the same setup. You're going to have your desktop audio and you're going to have your mic audio. And most stream setups are only going to consist of these here two or three audio sources. The first thing that we're going to need to do to get our audio sorted is to get rid of the desktop audio. So you can either delete this here or we can mute it for testing purposes so that if you have to use it for something else, one of the alerts don't work. Just for testing, we can just mute it. You don't have to totally remove it. Now we don't want all of our audio mixed before it gets to OBS. So to fix that that's the reason why we're going to remove the desktop audio and we only want to add back the audio that we want but since we just removed the desktop audio we're not going to have the things that we had such as music game sound alerts or sounds from our browsers and other things so we're going to need to re-add all of this here stuff back to obs to keep this basic your stream is made up of six different sounds these sounds are made up of game, Discord, music app like Spotify, web pages or browser sources, Windows sounds, and sound alerts. We can do all of this here inside of OBS, so your Windows settings don't need anything changed in them at all. This will all be done in OBS. The first thing that I'm going to do is the easiest ones. Once you mute your desktop, all of your audios, your sound alerts and stuff like that are going to be off. For most people, this is only going to be one or two browser sources, so this is going to be the simplest one to do first. What you need to do is go through and find all of your browser sources or sound alerts that make sound. If they're added with a browser source, you can just double click on them and control audio via OBS. So for sound alerts, just click this here on. Now this is going to let your audience hear the sound alerts. If you happen to have an issue with not being able to hear your sound alerts anymore because you turned off the desktop sounds, you might want to go into here, click on the advanced audio properties. Go to the sound alerts and monitor and output. If your stream's hearing them twice, you're going to have to turn that off. If you have your desktop removed, you should only be hearing that desktop audio from your headphones because your headphones are going to be set to your desktop audio and should get all of the sounds. Once you control your alert sounds in OBS, you might have to turn this here on monitor and output. So keep this here in mind for any future browser sources. If you no longer can hear it after you do this, this is how you're going to turn it on. We're just going to click close and you're going to see that the sound alerts is added here and we're going to continue this here process for all of the other browser sources that play any kind of sounds. So for us, this is going to be sound alerts, media player, the instant replay, the main overlay, the latest video played, and our alerts. Now, not everyone's going to have a complex setup like me, and they're not going to have 15 different browser sources for things. I do a lot of testing, and I make a lot of videos like this here. So I have a lot of stuff in here that most people probably won't have. So you might not get as many audio sources added as me. The less that you have, the less complex it's going to be. So once you have all your sound alerts and web browsers all added, you're going to see a big list of audio here. Don't worry about that. We can hide all these here later on. We're just going to continue and go to the next one. Once we have the browser sources and alerts done, next we'll add the media player. For this, we're just going to add a source. In here, if you click the plus, you can go up here to the application audio capture beta. We're going to give this here a click and we're going to name it music player. You need to make sure that you keep all of these here named. If you do not, if you have a problem, you're never going to be able to find your audio issue. So make sure that you take the time to name for every single one of these here that you add. Now you can call it music player or Spotify or whatever you're using. I'm going to just call it music player for this here example. And once we add it in the drop down menu, we're going to have everything that we have open. So make sure that your Spotify is open. If you just opened it after you started this, you're going to have to close this here, give it a cancel and double click again. Leave your Spotify up for a few minutes before you try this. Click on the window and go to Spotify. Now you can make this here window match the title exactly each time for this one here so that it's not going to pick something else by mistake but I usually just click the match title otherwise find window of same type so that it's only going to look for things from the Spotify and just click OK. Now these things are all adding sounds here do not worry about that like I said we're going to be able to hide any that we don't want to see or that we don't need. Now if you have any other issues adding audio or if I happen to miss one of the audio sources that you use in here this is going to be how you add every audio source. 
as long as you can see it here and it's an open window, you'll be able to select it through here. So if I do happen to miss one of them and you have a different audio source than I have, just make sure that you go through here and select it. If you're not sure which one it is because it has a different or odd name or you just, it's not something that you normally see, what you need to do is turn it on and then go through and select each of these until you see the audio moving. The one with the audio moving is most likely the one with sound coming from it. So that's just an easy way to add any music. There is other ways to add music, but this here way will add any application you have open on your desktop. I just wanted to make sure I mentioned that in case I do miss any, you'll be able to just go through and select any application that you have open. Next, there's going to be two different ways to add your game sound. If you stream with your desktop, which I don't actually recommend, I actually suggest using Game Capture or Windows Capture, you're going to have to add it as an application audio device. So what you would need to do is launch your game, once the game is open that you normally play, what we're going to do now is click on the plus and we're going to add another application audio capture device. This one here this is only going to be if you use display capture. So if you're using display capture, you are going to have to add your game separately. For this one, we're just going to call it game apex. So we happen to know that this is going to be the apex game. Click OK. Now for this one here, it's got the game game bar. We don't want that one. We want to actually find the R5 apex.exe and select it. Now in the windows match priority, you can match title. Otherwise find window of same type. If you use game capture or window capture, you'll have different options in here. So I'll show you that as well next, but we're just going to click OK. So if you're just using display capture, you would add your audio as as an application capture audio beta. Now again, I just want to uh, mention to make sure that you name everything. Make sure you name every one of these so that you're going to know what they are down here through the list. So this one here is going to be game audio. You should name it game audio. I just named it game apex, but make sure you, that you relate these to your sound so you don't actually think it's your game if you happen to have like things like window capture or game capture on. Now if you happen to play something like YouTube on stream or you're using a web browser source to watch other Twitch streams and stuff like that, you're going to just need to add it in the same way. You're going to click on the plus, click application audio capture. We're going to name this one here web pages and click OK. For this one here, you're just going to have to literally go through and find it. It'll say Chrome, whatever you're watching. It'd be Star Drift, it'd be whatever. It depends on what you're watching. I'm going to stick this one here in because this here is what I'm watching. This is what's going on in the background. And I have all of my, all my sounds are muted right now on my PC. I'll turn them on and test them once I have them all added. These would normally be moving if I just turn his volume up, but I'm recording. So I don't want that noise in the background. These do all work. I have tested them already many times. So definitely keep these in that in mind to test them while you're adding them, make sure that you have it playing sounds. Same as your media player, your sound alerts and stuff like that. Give them all a test. You can do all that offline. Now that we have these ones here done, if you happen to be using a window or game capture, I'll go through those ones as well. So if you window capture something, let's say you're going to window capture your browser source or your game. We're just going to call this here game browser. I, if depends on what you're doing. If you don't window capture at all, this is something you can skip. This is skippable. So if you don't use window sources or browser sources and you only use the desktop capture, this isn't going to matter to you at all. But if you have a window capture, this is just going to be an example. I, game browser doesn't really make sense. I'm not really sure what you would be window capturing besides your game or your win, uh, like a browser a website or something like that for another page. So we're just going to click OK. And in here, once it selects what you're supposed to be viewing, mine's going to be a web page. We can go down here and it says capture method automatic. If this shows a black screen, change it to Windows 10, 1903 and up. If it's fine on automatic, it's fine. Just leave it. And we want to check the capture audio beta. Now when we click this one here in, we already have the browser sources add it. So this is going to add it twice. Like I said, if you don't use window capture, this isn't going to, this isn't going to be something that you need to do. But if you happen to do a window capture for your browser sources, you're only going to need to turn it on one time. And then every single time that you open a new browser or anything, all you're going to have to do is change the window. So this might be a little bit easier if you're playing sounds from like Google Chrome or anything like that there. But I already have this one here added. We're going to add them both. But I definitely suggest you not adding this one here at all if you're doing display capture. I'm just using them as an example. The next one is game capture. It's going to be the same thing. If you use game capture, there's going to be an option in here when you click OK that says capture audio beta. So this here one here is a little 
little bit better for gaming as it can capture any full screen applications. If you're not capturing the desktop, this is gonna be a much better way to capture your games and stuff like that is to actually use the game capture because you can just turn on the audio. It's gonna automatically track anything that you have full screen, which is 80 to 90% of your games unless you use windowed mode. If you use window mode, you might actually need to use window capture, but it's gonna have the same thing. It's gonna have the capture, audio beta, and we're gonna click okay. Now you can leave it here on the any full screen application, but you can go down to capture specific window and you'll be able to go through and pick your Apex or your Call of Dragons or it depends on whatever it is that you're playing. For me, I'm just going to use the Apex as an example and click OK. You see that we have a lot of audio in here and this here might be a little deterring for you, but it's actually fine. Having all these here audio sources in here aren't something that you'll have to have all in here. So we can go through once we're done setting this up, not right now, and we'll be able to click on them and click hide so that you only have the important ones showing. The last thing that we're actually going to need to add in here is our Discord. Everyone uses Discord, so we're going to actually need to add that one too. For Discord, it's the exact same thing. We're going to add an audio application capture beta. We're going to name this one here Discord so that we know if we have a Discord problem and our people in the chat can't hear them, we know what one it is. Like I said, name everything. In the drop down menu, you're going to be able to find the Discord for whatever page you have it open on. We're gonna select that one there and I wanna leave it as the match title. Otherwise, find window of same source. If this one here gives you a problem, go down here to match title. Otherwise, find window of same executable. So this will play anything from the discord.exe. So if you have any problems, use that one. That's the one I'm gonna use for default and I'm gonna click okay. The default one should work fine though. So I wouldn't really worry about it unless you have an issue. Now that we have all of the audio that we need it, I'll add it back to OBS. Let's set up the audio tracks. So this is going to be to how to set up the audio tracks. Over here in the audio mixer, these here three dots, you can click any of them and go to the advanced audio properties. Now there's gonna be a lot of options in here. We can make this here full screen and get it expanded out. You can see here that it has tracks and it has one to six. So everything on track one, give it a check mark. Give everything in this here list a check mark for track one. Now for track two, you wanna go through and you wanna remove any of the ones you don't want. So for me, this is going to be things like my media player. So I uncheck my media player, uncheck the music player, uncheck my sound alerts because I don't want sound alerts over on my YouTube. Never mind. I'm gonna. Okay, so what I've done now, it took me a little bit of time. I went through and I check marked every single thing for track one. And for track two, the third one up, I removed for the video, the music player, and I have a media player here as well that plays from the web page. I uncheck this one here as well. So there's going to be no music on track two. Now, if you're testing this and you happen to get music when you send it to track two, you'll just have to figure out what one is playing the music and uncheck it. If it's unchecked, you're not gonna have that sound at all on track two. Now you can uncheck all the rest of these. I have these here checked because this is for recording, but you can remove the check marks from everything past three. So you don't need any check marks past here. This is, this is actually not doing anything at all. If you record, you're going to have six tracks full of stuff, full of junk. So I definitely only check the tracks that you're using. When you add them, it's going to automatically check mark them all for you. So I go through and I clean them up and make sure that I only have things on track one and track two. So once it looks like this and you have your media player and your music player completely removed, you won't have to worry about music on track two anymore and we'll be able to give this here a close. Now we're gonna go over here to the settings, the OBS settings, and we're gonna go down here to the output options and we wanna make sure in the streaming tab that we select our audio track number one and check mark the VOD track and select track one and click OK. This is just gonna make sure that on Twitch, we're using track one, we're gonna have all of our music, we're gonna have a rape stuff, crab rave, whole bunches of stuff that we're not supposed to have any results. This is all gonna, it's all gonna be on track one so we're gonna get all the sounds over on Twitch. And then just give it a click OK. And the last thing that we're gonna need to do, why we have all of this here audio set up, is so that we can set our vertical track over here to track two. So what we're gonna do in the vertical plugin is we're gonna click the settings. In the streaming tab, we're going to need to uncheck the use OBS settings. In the audio track, select audio track two and make sure your video encoder settings are all set up the same as your stream in OBS, NVENC, whatever it is for kilobytes and you want two keyframes because it's required. So make sure that you have that changed as well and make sure this is all correct after you check this because it's not gonna use the same exact settings anymore. You're gonna have to make sure that these here line up and they're the same. So whatever it is that you're sending to YouTube, whether it's 3000 kilobits, 10,000 kilobits, just make sure it's the same and click okay. Now what 
what this here did is we selected track two. All of the things that we added here in the advanced audio properties to track two is the only audio going to YouTube. So there's absolutely going to be no media player and there's absolutely going to be no music player. This audio will not make it to YouTube if you have this here set up correctly. After that, you'll basically just need to test your stream. What you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go live, test all of your alerts, test your browser, test your media player, and you're going to need to make sure that you stream for 10 or 15 minutes to make, just give yourself time to test your game and everything else that you just added to make sure that you're not missing any of your sounds. If you are missing sounds, you've seen how easy it is to add it. Just click the plus application audio from the drop down menu, find out what it is that you're missing and just, just add it the same way. It's as easy as that. And what you can do once you have it all set up, make sure you test it before you hide any of your audios. Make sure that you test it all. Once everything is set at a good level and that you can hear it, things like Discord and stuff like that, you're gonna be able to just go here and click hide. You, There is some things that you are gonna want. You're probably gonna want your game audio and you're probably gonna want a few other audios, but there's a few in here I'm not going to need that we're just gonna be able to click like the instant replay. We don't need to see that one. We don't need to see the one for my latest video. Those audios are set in the web browser themselves as well. The main overlay is actually my alerts. As long as you hear your alerts, it's fine, but you'll be able to hide them all except for the ones you're using. So I definitely still suggest leaving a couple of them that you can see. And again, if you can't hear your alerts, once you do this here, once you set your browser source to control your audio, you might actually have to go in into advanced audio properties, go through to your alerts and click monitor and output. So if, you, if you're not hearing your alerts anymore at all, just click monitor and output and then you'll start hearing your alerts again. So that's one way to fix it and make sure you do all of this before you hide your sources. If you hide your sources, this is gonna be really complicated, but you are gonna be able to right click and unhide all. There's no option, I think. I don't think there's any option to unhide one at a time. <laughs> so that's a little unfortunate. So what I would do after this here, after you're done testing them is hide everything but the one you need so I would have my game my browser my discord my alerts and that's it I would hide all the rest of them because you don't really need them your music player maybe you would want to have your music player and that's it and your microphone don't hide your microphone keep your microphone visible so you can see at least your four one so you can at least see your four audios so we're gonna go through and hide all those ones now after you go through and hide all the ones that you need, the last one here is the desktop audio. You can actually hide it as well and you won't not you won't need it anymore so you can completely remove it, but I suggest just hiding it because sometimes if you do happen to have issues, it's a lot easier to turn off all of the audios or mute all of the audios and turn your desktop audio back on if you're still having issues with setting up your sound this way. But once it's hidden, this is what it should look like. You should have your alerts, Discord, your game, your mic, and your music player. This will make it so that you can adjust all the important audios but not see all the junk. This will keep it clean and tidy for you. So make sure you go through and hide all the ones that you don't want to see. It will clean up your OBS quite a bit. After that setup, now you should have all of your music music on track one, going to Twitch, playing your music and stuff, and everything on track two that's going to YouTube with zero music in it. We have no, no music added to track two, and anything else that you don't want it to add to track two or any sounds that you don't want in track two, you'll be able just to go back to the advanced audio properties and uncheck them as you don't want them. So if you're having problems with anything else, you can just go through and uncheck those two if they're causing problems on your YouTube content. So it'll be as simple as that to remove and add things back to any track that you want. But that's as simple as it is. This here did take a little while to explain and yes, sir, it was a couple of things in audio to set up, but it is really simple. Those things aren't complicated at all. I I know it looked like a sophisticated mess, but just adding an application audio, clicking the drop down menu and selecting the program you want the audio from into your OBS is a very simple process. As you see me just go through it here, I have no problem setting this here up from scratch each time. And once you have it set up a couple of times, it'll get easier and easier. Once you have audio issues, you might have a little bit of a hard time finding it. Do remember that you can hide and unhide them to find out what's making the issue or having the issue. You might have to do that a few times, but that's it. That's everything there is to it. If you think I forgot or left something out, definitely leave it in the comments below. And if you like or found the video helpful, hit the thumbs up and get subscribed for more content. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.